Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. It's Tuesday. I thought it was Monday, but it's Tuesday and we're to do the star sign reading. This is my Buddha. This is what I've been working on. My little project yesterday, actually. You kept me very calm, didn't you? It's not completed yet, but I thought you might like to see my Buddha. It was black, didn't we? So this has not been touched. So we've got the silver going on. It was all black. And then we've got uh, this going on. But as you can see, I've still got more to do. I've still got more to do. Do you like my Buddha? Okay, you're going to get down from the table. You can sit down here if you like and listen. You're heavy. Okay. So, them colours, I'd already chosen the cards. And it was like, I'm going to romance angels want to speak. I'm going to show you my Buddha. I'm going to show you my Buddha. And um, I'll do you your star sign readings. Of course I will. Why not? All my hair's down there, Buddha. Romance angels. Oracle of the fairies. So we're going to do the 12 signs of the square table. We should do them individually. I might get all the cards out first. There's a lovely little reflection of my heart chakra, which has all the chakra crystals within it, within the heart, um, a rainbow effect on my table, a bit like that, a bit like that, a bit like that. So the fairies, we're going to um, use the fairies, they're assisting us, we can use them, okay, to assist us during these times, so let's tap into the fairy, what's the tea, Lucy, we should find out. I'm going to pull the cards. She wants to have a song on. <clears throat> she wants to have a song on. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, and Leo. Libra. Scorpio, I've just got the one there, that card felt thick. Sagittarius. Scorpio, your card's squeaking. <laughs> Unless it was something outside, but it felt thick. It was squeaking. Okay. Capricorn. Oh, okay. Sagittarius is squeaking now. Capricorn. Aquarius, we're missing someone. I'm so sorry, Virgo. Jeez. Virgo and Pisces. I feel like there's something to do with um, talking to your opposite. So you might go that way. <clears throat> because there's two keys on here. So... Seen as you're opposite the person who you're opposite in the zodiac, which is your ideal partnership, it's like I feel there might be a conversation. A little bit of repairing in there. Ding! He's an idea. Okay, so let's chat. <coughs> counterpart to counterpart. Romance angels. So we're going to be having a chat with whoever sits in your seventh house opposite you. Okay, on the zodiac wheel. You'll be able to help each other. <clears throat> Aries. Aries wants to talk to Taurus. Well, <laughs> Taurus, budge Aries over. They're going to talk to Libra. Gemini. Cancer. Leo. Virgo. What's up with Virgo and Pisces? They were kind of missing at the end. Well, Virgo wouldn't come in until Pisces was in. 
that's kind of the end of the line. You won't come in until the other one comes in. Okay. Libra. Libra, you need to speak to Aries. That's a strong divine masculine energy there. Aries. It is the divine masculine. It's the emperor and the emperor wants to talk to Taurus. Okay, Scorpio. Sagittarius. Capricorn. Okay, Aquarius got a jumper. So I feel like Aquarius is not far behind Pisces, who they're in alignment, Pisces and uh, Virgo. So it's like they're working in sync. Let's uh, finish with Pisces. Take what you, I say take from all of them. It just tells the one story. It's just all different aspects of yourself. So have a look at where all these star signs sit on your chart. What house they sitting in. Okay. And that I can't tell you because it's different for everyone. It is a good book, actually. Are we really going to do this? We can do this if you want to. It doesn't, yeah, I'm not fast. I'll go and get the book and I'll show you the will, what I'm talking about. Okay. Bloody book. Let's get told. I used to get told off, told off when I used to say the word bloody as a child. And I used to say to my mum, bloody's in the Bible, bloody's in the book. If you don't believe me, take a bloody look. I used to get like a smack for that one. <gasps> right, astrology. So, Zodiac, let's have a look at this. Right, okay. So you can see who sits opposite you in the Zodiac. Just pay attention to that part. So you can see Sagittarius opposite Gemini. Scorpio's opposite Taurus. Libra's opposite Aries. Who's next? <laughs> Who's next? Virgo, you're opposite Pisces, Libra, opposite Aries, we've done that, we're going back down this way. Leo, opposite Aquarius. Cancer, you're opposite Capricorn, Gemini, Sagittarius, already there. Okay, we've done it. We've done it. Another thing that you'll notice is that you're either a plus or a minus, the positive signs, the negative signs. What it says here is the two polarities, positive and negative. The positive signs have an extroverted and upbeat quality, being outwardly orientated and needing the stimulus of external activity and interaction. The negative signs are more introverted and low-key, focused on interior experience. There is no judgment attached to the terms here. We can think of them rather like the Chinese philosophy of yin and yang, equal and complementary. You see what we're doing? You can see what we're doing here. Where's next? I'm going to go to your houses. Oh, okay. Virgo. For some reason, we have a bookmark on Virgo. Virgo extracts what is good and makes something useful out of it. This sign brings order and efficient functioning. Negative, mutable earth suggests an ability to do what is necessary without fanfare. Craft and skill are essential to this sign. Uh, let's see what's here. The houses. The houses. Just what we want. Okay. The house is an, over, an overview. Right, you... Your um, sun sign, su your sun sign, is your first house. Right, so you can go from there and then work your way around the zodiac. Okay, so your first house, 
is New Beginnings. The second house, so I'm Taurus, so that's my first house. My second house is Gemini. My third house is Cancer. <laughs> Lucy, come on, you can do this. My fourth house is Leon. My fifth house is, who's next? Virgo. My sixth house is Libra. My seventh house is Scorpio. My eighth house is Sagittarius. My ninth house is Capricorn. My tenth house is who? I've gone Aquarius. Eleventh house, house Pisces. Okay. Got it? You kind of get it. So work that bit out. Get a bit of pen and paper. Do it now. Just do it quickly. And you can write down what these are. And you can see how it comes in with you. So we'll do it with me as we go along, shall we? Let's do that. <laughs> oh, I don't care. That's absolutely fine with me. So I'll be telling you who it would kind of relate to for me. Am I doing that? I don't think that's a good idea. We're going to get confused. I think they kind of know. Do you know? Okay. Well, your first house is about your new beginnings. Birth, self-identity. So for me, that would be Taurus. Okay. So when I go into Gemini, if they're my resources. Possessions, money. So the Gemini reading may come in and give me guidance regarding resources, possessions and money. Okay. Taurus will give me about my birth my self-identity, new beginnings. My third sign is cancer and it's about communication, siblings and learning. My fourth house, and it feels like this is your role, like with the star signs, okay? So you get, I get my resources from Gemini regarding possessions and money. My third, I communicate with cancer regarding siblings and learning. Okay. Fourth is the home, which for me will be Leo. That's actually my moon sign. So fourth is a message about home, family, origins. Fifth is creativity. Romance, children. So who do I need to speak to about romance and children? Uh, Virgo. Okay, that's my rising sign, I believe. I'm not quite sure of my time of birth. That's interesting because it says four o'clock here. And I believe I was born at four, 4.30 in the afternoon. Maybe four o'clock around that time. Anyway. So, fourth for me is going to be... Uh, oh no, fourth is Leo. Sorry. Leo, family, origins. Okay. I see. I see. MC. MC. I see. AC, DC. AC, DC. <laughs> Fucking hell. Maybe I should not. I just wanted to do a reading. Let's carry on. Okay. Oh dear, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, home for me, family, origins, it took me to the girl's dad, he was a Leo, and it was like, I see you, it's like watching over me, that's what I chat to about the home, okay, family, origins, makes sense, so Virgo, I would kind of uh, consult with about my creativity, romance and children, okay, my ascending, and it says here, descendant, the place where the zodiac cuts the horizon in the west, exactly opposite the ascendant, it is symbolic of the setting sun. Wow. And then I move on to Scorpio. Well, I've got routines here. Health, everyday life, which is with Libra. And then it cuts because it's kind of like your opposites. It doesn't show it here, but it does. When you do it on the chart. Okay. Which we can go back so I can show you. Taurus being the first house. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the seventh house, your opposite. But it's like one of you's on because you've got the first here and then you've got the seventh here. And I feel that's why you're kind of talking with each other because you can both have a tendency to like be the same. Okay, and one of you needs to kind of be the positive one to kind of pull the other one up and, and vice versa when it's needed. So it's learning how to balance your opposite. All will function then. We've got six, house, which for me will be Libra. 
health and everyday life. Give that hand over that over to divine justice. You deal with that. I'm healthy. My everyday life is wonderful. Seventh, relationships, partnerships and marriage. And there's two hands like coming together. You only have to look at the little icon, guys. Okay. The eighth is, it would be Sagittarius, transformation, intimacy and shared possessions. The ninth house for me would be Capricorn, adventure, oh the devil, travel, higher education. And then it says middle of the heavens of MC, medium, Coeli, Coeli, this is all new to me guys, MC. And then we have um, the 10th house, which is Aquarius, achievement, career and reputation. 11th house, the Pisces for me, is commun communities and social life. Oh, the 12th house, I'm so sorry I've missed someone out, Capricorn, Aquarius. Well, Pisces is service, self-sacrifice and seclusion. I think I kind of messed up a little bit there somewhere. Told you, really confusing. Did that help? Did it help? Well, how long did I just... Oh, 16 minutes, 29 seconds. That'll do. That'll do. I can't remember them now, so I'm not sure what <laughs> I'm meant to be talking to who about what. I think we just have a look at our opposites, okay? But that's what I mean by you can take the whole reading to fit into your life if you want it to. Don't just go to straight away to like your star sign. It's like I find a message in all of these. Okay. Hello, Mr. Fly. Well, Sagittarius is saying here there's a free of summer. It's news worth celebrating. Announcements such as weddings, graduations or births and friends you cherish. Cherish, cherish. So tired of broken hearts and losing at this game before I start this dance I'll take a chance in telling you I want more than just romance You are my destiny I can't let go Baby, can't you see? Cupid, please take your aim at me Oh, a bit of a random start to the reading I'm just going to um, read the messages, not look too much in about who's talking to who. But we have Flourish, the, um, I need to bring it back, the Oracle of the Fairies. I've gone kind of a little bit giddy and dizzy. Okay. Um, the top card wanted to be seen and we have Flourish, which is what I absolutely love here. Seeing as the bottom of the deck is the Three of Autumn, we can see that Sagittarius has the Three of Summer. We see that there's feminines on here celebrating. So there is news worth celebrating. There's announcements such as weddings, graduations or births. Friends you cherish. We have the three of autumn behind the scenes. Working here. Three of pentacles about working in partnership. Follow your passion when it comes to your career. Be the best at what you do. Being compensated for your creative talents. So this is kind of an all-round reading for you to help in every situation um, in all those houses <laughs> that you're visiting. I don't know why are you visiting lots of houses. Celebrate it. <laughs> we got Flourish. The Lotus Flower Fairy tells you to learn from experience and shed your inner light on any unclear areas of your life or those of others. Now you got the chart. Okay. I'm trying to think of a way to actually give you like a screenshot. I might be able to use it as a thumbnail. Just so that you can see 
fifty houses. Just remember the sun is you. It's your birth. Okay, your first house. And you can work the rest out. Or I might even just be able to type it up in the description box for you. That would be good, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, Aries, should we go for this? I'm sure these cards will probably may have more meaning after we've done the reading. Aries, come here. Come here. Divine Masculine. Five of Summer. Transition. A transitional phase. The fives is. The fives is. The fives are. High five. I'm high fiving you, Divine Masculine. This is a karmic energy that's on here. Trust that there is a reason for everything that happens. Might have something to do with uh, the alignment of your houses. Remove yourself from the negative emotions of others, focusing on that which brightens or worries you. Right. This is you being paired up to my masculine in the past with a wrong partner. And I feel like, have a check between what I said, whether it was a plus or a minus, a negative or a positive. Because it feels like the interaction, the mix here. It said the other day about, um, on one of the cards, about how blending, I think it was with the Oracle of Shadows and Light, um, Storm Collision, was it Storm Angel? It says some kind of elements are not meant to mix, like water and oil. It's that kind of. Isn't it? It's all written in the stars, right? I, I don't take any of it uh, too seriously when it comes to star, star signs. I just kind of look, well, I am one. So um, we handle all. Five of Summer, can we read this card though, please? Oh, my ears are ringing. There's much serene beauty in life. However, that kind of tranquility may be overlooked when you're fixated on things that make you unhappy. Release negative situations and return to your own inner peace. Make sure your thoughts are thoroughly focused on optimistic outcomes. Envision the present and future that you want to manifest and forget about the past. If you need to mourn a loss, don't hesitate to reach out to those around you who love you and can help you recover in a healthy way. Remove yourself from the negative emotions of others. Melodramatic people and situations foster feelings like regret and anxiety which don't help you live the life you desire. Don't worry, brighter days are just around the corner. The fairy appears clearly worried by what is just out of view on the card. She's ready to take flight when perhaps a time of contemplation would serve her better. Additional meanings of this card, forgiving past mistakes, getting something positive out of a challenging situation and seeing all possibilities. The karmic energy, uh, Divine Mesclin, you may find that if you haven't like uh, detached from uh, the past and the karmic, karmic repercussions that you have um, experienced, you will find that the karma removes herself, themselves. They were just, they're going to be happy to go now. You actually have a protective shield around you, which doesn't allow any shit to... The, um, not only that, but you will be sending out a, a repelling energy. They'll be picking up on it, and the two of you will just no longer feel any attraction towards each other. And it's going to be mutual. <clears throat> it's going to be a mutual dissatisfaction with what you have. So the past being made easier. Okay. Now it may be that this other feminine has been focusing on not moving on. And that has been cleared now. There's been a pathway clear for them. Okay. Emotional loss. It's kind of, I feel like you've done dealt with that now. It's the energy of it is what it is. So to my masculine, high five. Well done. Well done. It's all clear, your energy is so clear, crystal clear, that it's repelling anything that's not of your nature. <clears throat> Can we have some sunshine, please? We're just getting over the doom and gloom a bit. 
Well, let's have a look at what the Romans angels want to say for Aries. Make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. You're free. You're free to make the effort. Okay. Make the effort with what? For one, I feel trying to understand. Why things happen. Why things occur. It's about changing your story. Change the way you're telling your story. Make the effort. You're going to have to tell that story one day. Okay, so find the positive within it. Every experience that you go through is so that you can share your results with others. It said you received this card because some action steps on your part are necessary in order for your prayers about your love life to be answered. The angels have, have opened the doors for you and now it's time for you to walk through them. The first thing that comes to mind with respect to taking action is a good starting place for you. When you ask for spiritual help, you always receive it. Often this card comes in the form of intuitive guidance, which consists of repetitive feelings and thoughts. You get the sense that you should do this or that. You receive this card as a nudge to actually take that action. You'll then receive the next piece of the puzzle, meaning another intuitive message about what to do. And not only are you receiving this, but also um, the interference is uh, receiving this as well. It's kind of like buzz off energy. There's an acceptance here. There's, it feels like she's actually still trying to reach out for you, Divine Masculine. But it's you're not interested. You want to make the effort elsewhere. Okay. If you like, you can ask the angels to give you the motivation, courage, time and energy to take these steps. And that's on both parts. It's not just you having to leave the situation, Divine Masculine. I actually feel like maybe this feminine... She, it feels like she could be giving you that nudge. The feminine here, giving the nudge to the Divine Masculine. Towards the Divine Feminine. Okay, know that each one brings you closer upon the pathway to great love, every nudge. A nudge in the right direction. Okay, Na nature signs, I don't think I've ever had this card. I was going to say natural signs, signs from nature, as you're connecting here. She's still kind of like in the dark here. I'm not sure she's seeing the signs, but she's like she's sending them all to you, Divine Masculine. I do feel this is a karmic energy. They're not karmic, really. They're just, it's not a pen. It's not a match. Okay. Her wings feel heavy. They're not transparent, translucent. They're not really that magical. They feel quite stiff and rigid. So, nature signs. Music, I was going to get you a song. Would everybody like a song? Okay. Everyone can have a song. Of course we can. My rose is drying now. Well, it's not even my rose, but I kind of claimed it. It smells like dry flowers smell. <laughs> Let's see what song wants to come on for you. Nights in white satin. Interesting. I'm sure that come on when I was... Um, Check in earlier on to see what song come on. It's 13.10 by the way. So we're approaching 11 minutes past one. 13.10, 13.11. Where are we going to? Nights in white satin. Here's a song for you Aries, Divine Masculine. Let's get the lyrics up. And then we should read Nature's Signs. <coughs> Nights in white satin, never reaching the end. Letters I've written, never meaning to send. Beauty I'd always miss. Okay, beauty I'd always missed with these eyes before. Just what the truth is, I can't say anymore. Because I love you. Yes, I love you. Oh, how I love you. Oh, why am I going to, where was I going to? Gemini. I was just about to pick up the Make the Effort card. The lovers. Gazing at people, some hand in hand, 
just what I'm going through, they can't understand. Some try to tell me, thoughts they cannot defend, just what you want to be, you will be in the end. Mr. Paddy stopped talking. He actually looked in the windows as he posted the letter. He didn't look like the normal kind of postman. Anyway, it's a package. But he kind of stopped because he stopped talking and looked in. And then kind of a slow going. Yes, I love you. That's him singing. I love you. Oh, how I love you. There you go. Dazing at people, some hand in hand, just what I'm going through they can't understand. Some try to tell me, thoughts they cannot defend, just what you want to be, you will be in the end. And I love you, yes I love you, oh how I love you, oh how I love you. Nights in white satin, never reaching the end. Letters I've written, never meaning to send. Beauty I'd always missed, with these eyes before. Just what the truth is, I can't say anymore. <laughs> yes, I love you. Oh, how I love you. Oh, how I love you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. Oh, how I love you. Oh, how I love you. Breathe. She says that. Breathe. <laughs> We're not going through the full, full, for the full lyrics. Uh, I think that sums it up. Uh, nature signs. Be receptive to the subtle messages from nature as you go about your day. Nature talks to us continually. We need only open our hearts and minds. Never had this kind of guys. The fairies love to leave hints and clues for us in nature. It's one of the many creative ways in which they initiate communication with us. For example, fairies often leave feathers or release floating dandelion seeds to let us know they're nearby. The appearance of a friendly bird, such as a robin, is another message from the fairies that they're close by. Fairies and other creatures often work together as they are all in harmony with the earth, whose wisdom can come in many forms. Just allow yourself to be deceptive and use your intuition to decipher any signs that you see. You could leave your own sign for the fairies next time you're out in nature, letting them know you wish to connect with them. Leaving a tiny wooden fairy door next to a tree is a sure sign to the fairies that you're a fairy friend, while placing a figurine of a fairy or gnome in your garden or Buddha or on, the, or on your porch tells the fairies that you welcome them. I could put it on the porch outside. I could. Okay, it's a doorstep, same. <laughs> <clears throat> when leaving things outside for the fairies, make sure they're natural and biodegradable and don't use any screws or nails because some fairies don't like metal. Okay, if possible, six, six? If possible, sit next to a flowing stream and visualize your cares being resolved and any concerns flowing away. Alternatively, imagine your hopes and wishes flowing towards you. Looking out for any significant signs from nature as you do so. The fairies will pick up on your intentions and help to manifest them. If you don't have access to a stream, it can be just as effective to visual, visualise this process. It's all coming to you. It's like the karmic energy there just pushes you straight into the arms of your lover, which uh, Taurus, I did feel that uh, I did feel. <laughs> we haven't got much coffee left for this amount of star signs left. We could take a little break, really. How long are we going to be on for? Taurus, okay, Aries was drawn to you. Ten of autumn, you can see why you are the legacy. Home. Take steps to ensure the financial security of your children or other loved ones 
making wise, wise investments or planning for retirement. Honouring family traditions. Oh, you were the missing one, weren't you? Of course, because I started with Taurus, I got myself confused when I was reading my own chart. <laughs> Ten of Autumn. Cupid's here. There's a couple of them. There's a couple of little kiddies like playing in the air. We've got like a snail shell as a, a bird feeder. It's a bird bath. And then you've got like these fairies on the porch. They're like adult fairies. Little fairies. Children fairies. Fairy children. Fairy adults. It's like, I was going to say, fair, fairly your parents. Is it fairy your parents? Ten of Autumn. Get the bag. Family connections are extremely important. Honour your heritage and be proud of who you are. Share your history with your children or other family members. Embrace the positive and release any negative past events. It's good to hear, isn't it, Taurus? Being invested in your future. Oh, it says being invested. It says begin investing in your future. So, Taurus, I already fear that... I already fear... I can say it's fear in my mouth. You've already begun. Okay. Investing in your future. Make plans that include caring for your family financially in terms of future education, health care or retirement all that wisdom. Prepare now so that you can be free of financial worry later in life. If you're young and can spare only a little sum each month, it will really add up over the years. A happy family spends time together underneath a harvest of golden pears. The pears are a symbol of prosperity that will provide for their needs for years to come. Additional meanings of this card, family trees, honouring family traditions, financial security and inheritance and major business investments. What's the romance angels want to say for you, Taurus? Free yourself. Oh, so nice. This is so my life at the moment. My children are all set up. Education. Good to know about retirement, what that means. Okay, start at a young age. I can't remember what the other, their health. Perfect beings of health. Free yourself. It's time to take back control of your life. And it goes good. And it's just happening also naturally. And willingly. Everyone's willing. <clears throat> Why? Because it's time to be free. So free yourself. Like the unicorn in the image on this card, you may be feeling trapped. Perhaps you relinquish control to someone else, or maybe you feel smothered in your career or relationship. As you tune into yourself, you'll sense this specific area where this message applies to you. You can even ask yourself, in what ways do I feel limited or constrained? Trust the answers you receive. This card comes to you from the Romance Angels because... They've heard your call for great love. To experience passion, though, you must first allow yourself to feel deep emotions. In doing so, you may come up against areas of your life where you harbour discontent. Simply by acknowledging these areas, you bring light to the situation and allow room for the angels to help you. As you commit to taking back control of your life, your feelings will naturally thaw and reawaken. This leads to a greater capacity to love yourself, your partner, and your experiences. Taurus, exciting times. Very. Oracle of Fairies wisdom. How beautiful this is. <clears throat> okay. So Taurus was really, uh, I'm going to say, suggested in today's reading with the Queen of Pentacles. Divine Feminine. Have you ever been told that you're wise beyond your years? 
Now is the time to call upon your inner fairy wisdom to help you with the challenge. The challenge, all I can feel, is actually making sure that everyone's kind of weld, weld, that their weld is cared for. And the Divine Feminine can do that energetically. Your children, as the same as with your Divine Masculine, is under a protective bubble. And you have to have faith and trust in that, which frees you up to not have concerns about worrying about others. It's time to worry about you now. It's not even a worrying thing, is it? No. <clears throat> Wisdom. You know what to do. That's the best bit of guidance you can give anyone, including yourself. You know what to do. This fairy is telling you it's time to call upon your own inner wisdom in order to help yourself at a challenging time. It's probably the first time ever you've been free to make your own decisions and to go in whatever direction you're drawn to go in. But it's courage. Let's bring back some light. Thank you. Look at this owl here. Guiding the way. Well, not really. Actually, the feminine here is leading the way under divine's wisdom. So they're right behind you. They've got your back. This fairy is telling you it's time to call upon your own inner wisdom in order to help yourself at a challenging time. Or perhaps someone you know could do with some insight into their situation. It's coming up. Bear with me. I know I didn't jump straight opposite to um, your seventh house. We'll get there. Okay, it's important that you pay attention to all of it. This wise fairy is accompanied by a white owl. Owls being the symbol of wisdom. She tells you it's time for you. The 111 is next, page 111. She's telling you it's time for you to trust your own knowing and reminds you that wisdom doesn't only come with age. Wisdom is the ability to see the bigger picture. So fly silently like the owl and hear and see everything before coming to a decision based on this wisdom. Being wise doesn't always mean you're right, but it does mean you have the ability to see into situations in a more impartial way than many others can, and for the highest good of all concerned. We all have access to inner wisdom, and pulling this card shows it's time for you to trust this fully. You could find yourself being asked for help or to facilitate a healing between two or more partings. This is where wisdom comes in. Allow your intuition to speak through the filter of wisdom, but always remember that others have a choice and free will. So give loving advice, but not orders, as no one really likes being told what to do, including you. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm getting better, though. I take on board what everyone tells me. And actually, even the ones that I dismiss, I still take on board. Me and Jamie had this yesterday where we had to um, handle a situation. It was a big test for both of us. And he was trying, he was apologising really to me. I said, you have no reason to apologise to me. That had to occur. It wasn't between me and him, but there was, um, he kind of took control. I suppose like the father, like the masculine, he's the only masculine man took control. I did get up and step in at, at my own point, but I didn't go and join him in it, if that makes sense. I just kind of sat here painting my Buddha, like in a very calm um, energy. I was talking about it and I said to him, I said, the thing is, is that you swear so much at them that you, they, they responded better to me than what they did him because he was, he was swearing. But he comes from the hood. I said, oh my goodness, you've got to thump them. Like seriously, the fact that he didn't actually thump them was a blessing in itself. And he was like, I do, don't I? And I said, yeah, and if you just try not to swear so much when you're, like, stating your case, um, I said, I think you'll find they'll be a bit more receptive. So he kind of took that away. Um, I took things away from it as well, but I was extremely proud how I handled the situation. I just tapped into my, um, my soul energy, to be honest, and it was all about focusing off the eyes and speaking to someone's soul. And... Um, Controlling them that way. <laughs> and this is what we're going to do. Okay, but then when I left the situation, it would only be five, ten minutes, and then uh, it wasn't doing what I'd asked. So Jamie would step in. But a different approach. Okay. Which was appropriate for the lesson. 
for yourself. Did we finish all that message? I think we did. Okay. So have you ever been told that you're wise beyond your years? And most us, most of us light workers are very wise beings, including Jamie. It's how to express what wants to come out. Right. Should we move over to Gemini? Oh, you're squeaking, Gemini. Ten of summer. That would be why. Ten of pentacles with Taurus. And then we've got um, Aries. Well, yeah, divine masculine, divine feminine. The lovers with the ten of cups. An emotionally fulfilling life with family or friends, raising children wisely and people you can trust. To raise your children wisely. The enlightened way. It's a big difference. Okay. Ten of summer. Hello, Mr. Fly. Don't scarf her just because I said hi. Okay, Gemini. The lovers. Divine masculine, divine feminine. There's a couple of little kiddies here as well. What are you playing? The banjo. Spending time with your family and loved ones is critical to a rich and happy life. The people you call family may be those you're related to, or there may be people whom you have chosen as your beloved community. Either way, offering love and support to those closest to you and accepting it in return is very important. Make space for them in your life. It's worth investing time and energy in your primary relationships. You can have the happy home, life you're seeking, filled with peace, and emotional fulfilment. The couple from the Two of Summer card, Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine, Two of Cups, the couple from the Two of Summer card have created a beautiful life for themselves and their children. The butterfly boat near the shores of Avalon means that their emotional currents will continue to evolve and thrive. Additional meanings of this card, a happy marriage, people you can trust, relationships at last, feeling emotionally content, raising children wisely. Amen to that. Should we have a look and see what the romance angels want to say? Keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. Maybe now we understand why opposites attract. Keep an open mind. The romance angel sent you this card as a reminder to stay open to the possibility of your soulmate appearing in a form that may differ from what you expect. This is especially true if you tend to date a certain type of individual. You drew this card to help you discover your soulmate. This card may signal that you've already been introduced to this person but have overlooked his or her romantic potential. This time, take the time to get to know the various individuals you meet, even if there isn't an initial attraction. At the very least, you will learn more about yourself and make a new friend. I love it. I just love it. I love it. There we are, call. Wait for winter. During the colder months, the Fairy Queen of Winter will help you manifest your most heartfelt wishes as long as your intentions are for the highest good of all. So it does look like that this... Um, Ten of Cups will be established in the winter months. It's going to be established. It's like so much about getting, freeing yourself, okay, accepting the legacy, following the signs, um, keeping an open mind and getting to know your opposite. <laughs> and um, keeping an open mind about people full stop. And then we wait, and especially about how we can all change and grow and develop and mature. Wait for winter. That's when this, I feel, is going to be um, it's going to be made manifest, the actual Ten of Cups. An emotionally fulfilling life with family or friends, raising children wisely, and people you can trust. So the union's already happened, the Two of Cups. Could there be marriage? I've been feeling this energy of actually the divine counterparts will marry this winter time. So wait for winter. You wait and see. <laughs> 
very soon. Yeah, it's not far off. I've opened a wedding as well. I'm in the wrong book. Jeez, give me the right book. And it's like, it's, it feels like it's a bit hard to believe, but it's not as well celebrating. Wait for winter. It comes uh, before wisdom. Wishes or spiritual seeds made in your heart will come to fruition during the winter months, emerging like winter berries, ripe and full of promise. And the reason I say that, I was actually speaking, I think it was to, Car to Carol the other day about it, I said I had a vision about getting married in the winter, that I kind of had this cape on, like a, a fur, was <laughs> I don't know, and like hand muff. And moths. And this was years ago, before this. Because I always knew that I would be getting married again. I used to say to my husband when I was married to him, I said, I'm getting married again. I said, I don't know if it's to you or if it's to someone else, but I know I'm going to have another wedding again. But I was quite open with him and he must have thought, well, whatever. I don't know what he thought, but um, yeah. And that was a vision I had. It was being like outside a church, more of a chapel kind of place though and um, it would be I think it's a green velvet anyway and it was winter time that was years ago seeds of intention planted years ago the pair calls around my thumb under the thumb <clears throat> Okay, so wishes or spiritual seeds made in your heart will come to fruition during the winter months, emerging like winter berries, ripe and full of promise. The fairy, of, the fairy queen of winter, with snowflakes on her wings, comes to remind you to keep your faith, to remember that all wishes, like seeds, grow in darkness until they're ready to burst forth into the light. Are you ready to receive your wishes? Part of the wishing process is to prepare yourself for their manifestation. This could involve removing any psychic ties or spiritual obstacles that have been holding you back from the full realisation and birthing of your dreams into this earthly realm. Wherever you live in the world, you'll know the Fairy Queen of Winter is nearby when the weather turns cooler or when you see snowdrops pushing up through the snow. This is a sign that your wishes, too, are soon to bloom. So look out, I did say about looking out for the wet the weather conditions. So look out for the weather turning cooler. Remember that our wishes don't always manifest in the way we've envisioned. They come to be in whichever way is perfect for all concerned and for the highest good of all. So that's compromise. You might have differences about whether or not you even want to get married. Okay. So this is why like the counterparts have to be um, Compatible and compromise. Be especially receptive to any ideas or inspiration that float into your mind around the magical time of winter. It's also the time to practice divination using winter-related mediums such as snowflakes or ice. If you live in a country that has cold winters, or if you live in a country that has cold winters, then use winter-related mediums such as snowflakes or ice. And if you don't, you can use ice cubes. It's so interesting. We had a bag of ice cubes in the in the freezer and everyone's been using them. And Jamie said, I need to get some more of them ice cubes. There it is. We're going to the chapel and we're going to get married. So the cards say, do you believe it? Well, you best believe it. You best get ready. Preparation time. What do you need to do? Who do you need to be to make that manifest? Okay. Um, where are we? Cancer. Cancer, you've got an awakening here. The yin-yang. Change the way you're looking at the situation. Embrace your uniqueness. A temporary pause in the action. So there's someone here that's doing a balancing act. It's the hanged man energy. So the hanged man's woke up. Okay. He's doing a really good balancing act now, but what he's focusing on is the yin-yang. So this masculine is changing the way that he's looking at the situation. 
embrace your uniqueness, a temporary pause in the action. It could also come in with the karmic energy over here, changing the way that they're looking at a situation. Because the hangman means that someone's kind of been tied up, trapped, caught. It's like he's doing handstands. Yippee! <clears throat> Let's take that leap of fun. So there's an awakening here. See what the romance... Oh, we can read this first. That's cool, yeah. That's all right. Card number 12. Major arcana here for Cancer. Opened up to the lovers. I've got the taste of fear in my mouth again. It's time for a change in perspective. Seeing your challenges in an entirely different way help you find a new lease on life or end a stagnant situation. Ask God, the angels and the fairies to give you signs that will help you perceive things in a whole other light. This card can also show up to remind you just how wonderful, eclectic, eclectic and magical you are. When others value qualities within you that you may have labelled weird or unusual, you can come to see the incredible strength and potential that lies in being your unique self. This is a card of charity and kindness. Just as the fairies are willing to reach out and help you on your path, you are asked to do the same for those who may be in need. It's beautiful to extend aid and compassion to others. Remember though to keep a balance so that you don't fall into an, an, unhealthy, an unhealthy pattern of overgiving. The fairy on the card is upside down, giving him a whole new way of reflecting upon his situation. The traditional yin-yang symbol rests on his feet as he searches for just the right balance in his life. Dismissed. He's already found that balance. Additional meanings of this card. A new point of view, seen beyond what's obvious. Hidden action behind an apparent standstill, exploring your past lifetimes. And giving so that others can gain. Giving so that others can gain. I feel like this energy of not giving to the karmic so that they're always gaining. Uh, gaining what? I don't know. <laughs> gaining greed. I'm not sure. It's about giving to others so that they can also gain. And it's about coming into union with each other. The two of cups. So the awakening now. Romance Angels would like to tell you to release your ex. <laughs> the time has come to clear your energy. They need to be gone. But you already know this. They're already gone, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Okay. I can hear the birdie outside. I feel like they're gone, but they're still chatting a lot of shit so that you're allowing to affect you. Don't allow them to affect you so easily. You're a lot stronger than that. Anyway, they can't come close to you anymore. Okay, it's like you're not going to be paying attention to each other. Um, you enjoy this card because your love life will improve once you emotionally and energetically release your ex-lover. The benefits of doing so include increased happiness, feelings of freedom and the ability to attract a new lover who would otherwise sense the presence of your ex in your aura. Can't sense the presence. The moment you make the decision to let go of the past, it is done. Sometimes this is akin to peeling layers from an onion. So continue releasing your ex whenever old. It's these thoughts here. Um, it's being triggered. You're scared. I tasted the fear a couple of times. You're scared because of what's been done to you and you're fearful that this could happen again. So the moment you make the decision to let go of the past, it is done. Sometimes this is akin to peeling layers from the onion. So continue releasing your ex whenever old, familiar feelings arise or you find yourself attracting people reminiscent of him or her. Heart's beating fast. So don't get yourself trapped into another karmic cycle. As the painting on this card depicts, you may want to ceremoni ceremonially burn a letter to release the old relationship energy and symbolically let go of old feelings. This is waiting for divorce to be finalised. I think it could have been finalised. The marriage certificate's been burnt up anyway. That doesn't exist anymore. So I'm not sure on what part of the process you're in. 
you're coming to completion now. So, or you can call upon the romance angels to clear lingering attachments to your ex. That's already been done. Let's look what the fairies would like to say, the oracle of the fairies. Abundance is coming your way. Because you're clear to be able to receive it now. And then you'll share that with the divine feminine. Without this um, ex being able to get their hands on it. It's not for them. That's why you did not receive it. Until you understood that it wasn't for them. It's for you. Abundance. Open straight up to it. Prepare yourself for income and abundance. Release any mental blocks you may have. In fairy land and human land, there is enough abundance for everyone. So actually, in a way here, you're holding yourself back because maybe to save the other person's feelings, you know that you're going to be very successful and rich and abundant in life, love, laughter, and you'll be leaving. You kind of feel sorry for this person, but don't allow that to stop you. They can get themselves out of their sad, sorry state if they want to. Go ahead and be the example and show how you do it. This is how we do it. Mm, 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 mm. The arrival of this fairy tells you that abundance is on the way. Perhaps you'll receive an unexpected gift or a cash windfall. It could also be a spiritual gift. Whichever form it takes, you just have to make sure that you're ready for it. Make sure you're in a place of receptivity that you believe and know you're worthy to receive any abundance. Work on this if you feel it could be an issue for you. Also, Divine Feminines, believe it, it's happening. Prepare to be married this winter. Prepare to be married. You're going to be married off. It's an arranged marriage by the, the Divine's intervention. By feeling truly worthy, we can be receptive to the flow and blessings of abundance in our lives. If you feel unworthy, ask yourself why and be honest in your answer. For this is the key to, to the door of abundance from the universe, spiritually, emotionally and physically. Often feelings of unworthiness can stem from childhood and facing these feelings can sometimes be challenging and painful. Taking your feelings, taking your feelings, talking your feelings through with a trusted friend or a professional counsellor could reap many rewards, shifting any negative views of yourself and of your worthiness to receive. Self-worth is key here. Interesting. I've got self-confidence, I said earlier, is the key. Self-worth is the key here. The fairy of abundance says there's enough abundance in the universe for everyone and you have just as much right to it as anyone else. So prepare yourself for income and abundance and enjoy. And also, when you're clear, this feminine will be clear to attract in her own love, abundance, prosperity, her own desires. Woo. We're going to do half of this, then we're going to come back and speak to your counterpart. Okay, Leo. Nine of all terms, divine feminine. Reward yourself for all your hard work, being happily and successfully self-employed, cherishing your time alone. Oh, you're in the Divine Feminine's energy here, Leo. That's you being balanced in your Masculine Feminine energy. Uh, it's a very beautiful card. It's a strength card. You're making beautiful music here, Divine Feminine. You're very contented. It's time for you to reward yourself for all your hard work, being happily and successfully self-employed and cherishing your time alone. Why are you successful? Because the most successful person is the happiest. Full stop. Nine of Autumn. You're in a really good position here, Divine Feminine, to be sitting in the Leo energy. <clears throat> Actually says, ah, oh, that's what it says, ah, oh, ah, oh, it's time to reward yourself for your wonderful achievements. You've accomplished a great deal and you deserve a little relaxation, nurturing and peace. Enjoy the fruits of your labours. Do something that feels truly luxu luxurious and self-loving. You've worked very hard. It's healthy to honour yourself in some small or large way as an incentive to keep your forward progress going. After all, you earned it. 
a very successful fairy enjoys the beautiful music from her harp with with the fruit with the fruits of her labour ripening around her. But it doesn't, it says <laughs> a very successful fairy enjoys the beautiful music from her harp while the the fruits of her labour ripen around her. Additional meanings of this card, and I feel for me that's my children. While the fruits of my labour ripen around me, right before my eyes, and it's magical to see it. Additional meanings of this card being happily self-employed, creating a beautiful environment, enjoying the finer things in life, and cherishing your time alone. It's time to take a rest. Divine feminines, say this me. It's time for you to just have a break. Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Chemistry with Leo. So the balance of masculine feminine energy. There's a strong magnetic attraction here. <clears throat> What's he holding? He's holding like a... He's holding an energy ball. And he's showing this feminine here. Chemistry. I'm actually feeling the karmic energy again. As if the, karm the karmic doesn't get it. It feels like the masculine, which we do, we try to, obviously we want to help our loved ones and people that we have relationships with, we want to tell them about this so that they, can, they too can also help to ease their own lives and their journey. Because we all have a unique journey to take. And it's like she's just not getting it. And you find that the people that don't get it, they're going to be falling away. You're here to help the people that do want to. Uh, evolve and be there to encourage them so there's a strong magnetic attraction here I felt the energy of the Divine Masculine kind of sense of this karmic energy can you see like we're not kind of compatible the Divine Feminine is alone here but she's content she's cherishing her time alone and it's like I feel like the Masculine you know who wants to he's being drawn towards the Divine Feminine he feels there's chemistry there Strong chemistry. You've received this card because you feel a strong dynamic pull towards another person. And I feel this is what the masculine is trying to explain to this karmic energy. I'm attracted to somebody else. If he's brave enough, then it's all out. In other words, you share chemistry with him or her. And this creates intense, intense pleasurable sensations that draw you to each other. If this person is someone other than your partner in a committed relationship, then the chemistry is probably a source of both stress and escape. You'll need to weigh your options and the consequences carefully before or instead of leaving your current partner or embarking upon an affair. If, however, you are single, divine feminine, and feel this pull towards another unattached, per unattached person, where it looks like your divine masculine here, you're under the illusion, it's an illusion, you're under the illusion that they're still attached and they're not. I'm not saying for you to reach out, okay, um, because you're under the illusion that they're still with someone and that's a no-go area. We're not allowed to do that. We're not allowed to chase a man if we believe that they are in another partnership. Ooh. Okay. So if, however, you are single and feel this pull towards another unattached person, then this can bring you the go-ahead green light of good news. And I feel soon you will be, you'll actually be finding out that the Divine Masculine is not attached to another person. Most likely the chemistry is mutual and merits exploration. In some cases, this card may mean that a lack of chemistry is a cause for relationship issues and personal discontent. If there was chemistry initially, it may be restored by devoting effort to the relationship. Passion sparks and romance can be revived through playfulness, thoughtfulness, time together and caring gestures. And one thing that, unless you were in a position where you were not kind of matched up, paired up during quarantine, a lot of the Divine Masculines found themselves kind of locked up with their Divine Feminine. Did they? They found themselves locked up with their divine feminine. Mm, that's interesting. 
with the karmic partner which highlighted the divine feminine i believe that the divine masculine has become extremely distant from his karmic partner throughout uh quarantine if anyone he was wanting to be locked up with it was the divine feminine and he's just intensified his own attraction to make that uh, be made manifest call upon the romance angels to guide you as you make important decisions about channeling this chemistry it's when it said here passion sparks and romance can be revived through playfulness thoughtfulness time together and caring gestures and i'm not sure that that's what the divine masculine uh, received unless he actually tapped into you divine feminine i don't think he received all the caring gestures spending quality time together i don't think it was viewed at as being that i think it was um a big life of you for a lot of people now we're coming back out changes it's like will the changes be enacted pure intention here the fairy of manifestation will help you to use your wishes wisely manifest your heart's desire with pure intention and for the highest good of all So I'm feeling like this was intended. I just said the divine has intended this to be. All of it, even the quarantine. Okay. It will be lifted once the counterparts have lifted themselves out of it. Okay, out of the illusion. It's a pure intention. Then you'll feel then you'll feel the lift. The fairies are usually very happy and willing to help us manifest our wishes as long as these are both from our heart and not for selfish reasons. It's also important that your wishes don't impose on the free will of others and that your wishes are for the highest good of all concerned, including the fairies. This means tuning into your inner wisdom. If it feels right, you can also call on the fairy of manifestation to supercharge your wish. Here's a wonderful wishing technique using dandelion seed heads which are full of wishes just waiting to be carried into the air, fueled by your wise and wishful intent. And actually said when uh, nature signs that you will see dandelion seeds flying through that through the air, they're the divine masculine's wishes. You are his wish. I've been seeing them everywhere. They come in the house, they come in the smallest gaps of the window. It's coming. Hold one of the fluffy seed heads to your heart and visualise your wish. Imagine that your wish has already come true, including your thoughts, feelings and emotions, when the wish has been fulfilled. Then take a deep breath, fueled by your wish, and blow the seeds into the air. Know the wish seeds will be collected and protected by a sylph wish guardian, one of the many tiny fairies who dwell in the air. The sylph will take your wish to the queen of the sylphs and ask her to manifest it for you. It's important to give thanks to the sylphs once you've blown your wishes away. The beauty of making wishes in this way is that you're also helping the plant to spread its seeds far and wide. And when you help nature, you automatically assist the fairies too. So this is a wise way to create a win-win situation for them and you. What do you wish for when you blow those dandelion seeds? I wish for the same thing I've been wishing for quite a lot of years now. The same thing. And I say the name, and out it goes. And with candles as well. Wish, pure intention. But what do you wish for? When you're blind that wish, and it's something that, it, that's why you can't tell it. I beg my wish, and the kids go, what did you wish for? I said, well, I can't tell you. And it's like, I'm not going to tell you what I wish, because it's like, my divine masculine's like full name. <laughs> Don't know. I say I can't tell you. What'd you wish for? Same thing I always wish for. <laughs> it's the truth. Six of spring. Virgo. Wonderful news is on its way. Smart choices that bring rewards, success, and public recognition. They're my wishes, aren't they? Yeah. Cameo. Word up. Okay, let's get this done because I need to. I've just heard someone flush the toilet upstairs and I need to go to the big girl's room. Not a little girl anymore. Six of spring. Congratulations on a job well done. 
This isn't a time to be shy or humble. Even if you don't normally seek attention, it's healthy to bask in the glow of your accomplishments. Allow people to see the wonderful things that you've created. Be visible and vocal about your beliefs. Let your unique talents and passions be known. You're a role model, showing others what is possible. Wonderful news is on its way to you. It may be a promotion, a new career, a new career opportunity, or even an award. Positive recognition for your hard work is at hand. The card features a person of great accomplishments. The unicorns represent purity of thought, while the red rose petals show passion and commitment. No wonder she's such a success. Additional meanings of this card. Success, receiving awards or scholarships, being in the public eye, an offer of help from someone very successful and smart choices. It's safe for you to love. It's interesting. <laughs> I was going to say, where till you meet him? You're going to love him. It's impossible not to love him. <laughs> and look, it was like being face to face, but it's like masculine's hiding here. Look, if I think he's amazing, you're going to think he's amazing. It's okay. It doesn't matter what you think. I think he's amazing. <laughs> Lucy, we're just being honest, apparently. It's safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. Shouldn't be ashamed of who you love, should you? No. I'm definitely not one, there's not one smidgen of a shameless. It's safe for you to love. This card indicates that you're protecting your heart from hurt because of painful relationship experiences. However, the angels can only bring as much romance as you'll allow inside. If you have a shield around your heart, how is love to get in? A closed heart repels the sensitive partner you're trying to attract. Following your inner guidance will protect you and simultaneously allow you to feel loved and loving. Trust your intuitive senses with respect to other people's trustworthiness and open your heart to those who are kind and gentle. Ask the angels to bring caring individuals, including a romantic partner, into your life and they'll do so, provided that you listen to and follow their guidance. Okay, so it's like the horse is ready to go with the feminine here. It looks like she might be going travelling. I'm not sure what's going on with the masculine here. Because it's like until you actually know that you've got the, the green light, then it's safe to pursue. I'm not sure if I'm talking to the feminine or the masculine. Don't think too much into it. If uh, your masculine hasn't let you know that he's not attached, then it's okay for you to assume that he is. Okay. Which keeps you away. So it's like your assumptions is what's keeping him away. Or maybe start assuming that he's free. You should be able to feel it, guys. But I'm not sure where that kind of leaves you with kind of whether or not you should be pursuing him. The, the last card spoke about people having free will and that you're not to force your wishes upon others, not to force them. Okay, you can wish, wish till your heart's content, but to um, allow the magic to take place. That's the message that I'm feeling. Allow the magic to take place. Let's have a look at what the, yeah, we've got the manifestation here. It says, be very honest and clear about what you wish to manifest in your life. And I've kind of just stated that. Well, I haven't stated it out loud. It's stated out loud for years now, the same thing. I've not changed what I would like to manifest into my life. It says, now write, write it down on paper. Done that as well. Manifestation step one. Okay, so if you've done these things and you haven't kind of changed your mind and you're quite adamant about what you want to wish into your life, okay, make sure you wrote it down on paper as well. Let's read this. Manifestation. Wrong book, Lucy. Okay. Man. Man. The man is best in manifestation. Element of fear. 
one of the simplest manifestation techniques is to write down what you want to manifest, whether it's an idea, a wish or a dream. Be honest with yourself and very clear about what it is you wish to happen. I've also got a list of all the traits as well that my Divine Masculine uh, possesses. Okay, once it exists on paper, it exists in the physical world. Can it really be that simple? In a word, yes. Another great way to do this is to say, I wish to manifest your idea, wish dream, or something better in my life. That, I mean, I do state that wish, but there was a point when I was first playing with manifestation, I said I would like that or better. Okay. Now it's just kind of, I'll just like that. Or better. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be a better version of that. Next, next, think of practical steps that you can take to start the process of bringing your idea into the world, always remembering that your plan must respect the free will of others. Intention is key here, for it's our intent that directs the flow of energy in our life like a magnet. Stay fully focused and allow the fairy of manifestation to guide you during this magical exercise. Try to do one thing every day towards manifesting your idea, wish or dream and trust in the process. Be sure to keep a lookout for any fairy signs that may appear along the way and follow their advice. This way you're allowing the divine universal intelligence to help you manifest in the best way for achieving the highest good of all. Okay. So, against there's no going against the free will of others. It's safe for you to love. I'm feeling that's for you, Divine Masculine. It's safe for you to love. It's safe for you to love, Divine Feminine. But the Divine Masculine here, there's this fear. And as you can see, Cupid's kind of blocking him from the Feminine here. It's like... Um, yeah, the Divine Feminine's being blocked here from actually reaching out to the Divine Masculine. You know whether or not you have an open heart and an open space that your Divine Masculine, if you've told your Divine Masculine that he can come to you at any time for anything. And if he's choosing not to, then that, it's like you can't force that. You can't force the conversation uh, just because you have a feeling that, you know, that he's, he's free. You be free to be able to receive him. Okay, should we leave this little segment here? I think we should do. I will catch up with you guys soon for the second half. One hour, 22 minutes, 57 seconds. One hour, 23. Let's go. Bye for now.